Alright, gonna do a video showing how Catholic eisegesis twists 1 Timothy chapter 3 verse 15 to prove their doctrine. So how do they do this? Well, first of all, what is eisegesis? It's where you force your own doctrine into the text instead of letting it speak for itself, basically. It's where you read your own theology into it to support your own heresies, instead of letting the text tell you what it says. But, like I said, Catholic apologists will frequently point to 1 Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter 3 verse 15 to, to uh, refute, refute, uh, sola scriptura, and as a result, they extract out unscriptural and cultic heresies, such as the inerrant magisterium of the church, the infallibility of the pope, and other heresies that reek of cultism, because that's what the Roman Catholic Church is. Uh, it's important to read that the context of this verse in no way supports or teaches that type of overreach of doctrine. It is a result of Catholic eisegesis inserting its own heresies into the text instead of letting the text define and explain itself. Let's go to the verse, 1 Timothy chapter 3. Verse 15, But if I tarry long, that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. Okay, now notice that wording, pillar and ground of the truth. Now, what they take that is they'll take that and say, see, the church referring, and, and when they say the church, they're referring, they basically read Catholic into the text, even though it's nowhere in there. But they say that the church is the pillar and ground of the truth apart from the word of God. Now we're going to see this is not the case. Again, in context, okay, at the start of the epistle, Paul explicitly tells Timothy to oppose those who teach false doctrine. Paul never tells young Timothy, young Timothy to oppose those who disagree with what the church says, because doctrine is the issue, not what the church says. Uh, 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 3 to 7. And I besought thee to abide still at Ephesus when I went into Macedonia, and thou mightest charge them that they teach no other doctrine, neither give heed to fables and endless genealogies, which minister questions rather than godly edifying, which is in faith, so do. And now the end of the commandment is charity out of a pure heart and of a good conscience and a faith unfeigned, from which some having sword have turned aside unto vain jangling, desiring to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say nor whereof they affirm. Okay, and we're going to see this consistent theme of it's the doctrine that, that it's the it's the content of the doctrine that matters. Okay, nowhere in the immediate context is Paul mentioned some kind of unique power of these church leaders to make doctrinal interpretive decisions, decisions or infallible proclamation, proclamations of doctrine. Nowhere is that ever taught. Uh, the content and theology of a doctrine is what matters, not the person who proclaims it. Okay, because you see with Roman Catholics, when the Pope proclaims something as dogma, Catholics never actually will open the word of God and say, okay, what well, does this line up with the word of God? Because they're not allowed to do that. They can't, they, they think that the Pope is infallible and they can't question him. That's why it's a cult. But you see, the content of the doctrine is what matters. It doesn't matter who says it. So the Bible believer, when the Pope makes a doctrine, make, proclaims something as doctrine, the, the saved born again saint will open the word of God and say, okay, what well, does this line up with scripture? If it doesn't, then I'm not obligated to believe it. It's that simple. It, again, it's the content and the, the theology of the doctrine. That's why in Galatians chapter 1, verse 8 through 9, he, uh, Paul says, even if he comes and preaches another gospel, to let him be accursed. So Paul, even Paul never lifted himself up, himself up as infallible. He says, even if I come to you and preach you another gospel, let me be accursed. Basically, that's what he's saying. You know Why? It further shows that all doctrine is to be tested with God's word, regardless, regardless of who is saying it. It's that simple. And Paul makes that very clear. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6 says that the saint is, quote, not to think of men above that which is written, unquote. Acts chapter 17, verse 11 says that the Bereans search the scriptures daily, it says that search the scriptures daily, to make sure what Paul was preaching was correct and lined up with God's word. It's the Holy Ghost who guides the saint into all truth. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 7 to 14. It says there, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man, the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit, for the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the, for, for, for what man knoweth the things of man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, spirit of the world, sorry, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things which, that are freely given to us of God. 
It says, uh, which things also we which things also we speak, uh, not in these words, which man's wisdom teaches, which man's wisdom teacheth, not good at reading on a computer, do apologize, but what the holy but what which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. And that right there is exactly why most Roman Catholics when you try to reason in scripture with them, they just won't hear it. Why? Because they don't have the Holy Ghost. They can't under, They can't hear the words of God because they don't have the Spirit of God in them. Uh, also, it's Jesus Christ who opens up the saint to the understanding of the scriptures. Luke chapter 24, verses 45. Okay, it's Jesus Christ, not the popes or the priests. Luke chapter 24, verse 45. Then open he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. This also goes against this Catholic heresy that, oh, Jesus never told people to read the Bible. He, he gave us a church, not the Bible. But then he's opening their understanding that they could understand the scriptures. Yes, he did want people to read the word of God. Those, those proclaiming the gospel are the stewards of the faith, of the truth, basically, but not the source of it. That's the big difference. They're the stewards. See, when you're the pillar of something, it doesn't mean you are that thing. You're just holding it up. You're proclaiming it in the sense right there. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 17. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 17. For if I do this thing willingly, I have a reward. But if against my will, a dispensation of the gospel is committed unto me. First or 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1. Let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ and the stewards of the mysteries of God. And 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 11. Another good scripture on the matter. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 11. According to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust. And it's Paul talking there. Uh, it's Jesus Christ who is the rock and foundation of the church. Not Peter, not the popes, not the priests. It's the Lord Jesus Christ. Not with this, this man-centered, man-worshipping religion of Roman Catholicism. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 11. Let's see who the foundation is. Because the Catholic will say, well, it's Peter. He's the foundation. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 11. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. He's your foundation. If you're a born-again saint, but if you're a lost pagan Catholic, then it's your popes and priests. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 20. Let's see who the uh, chief cornerstone is, the rock in this sense. Uh, Ephesians chapter 2 verse 20 and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone and by the way Pope Peter says the exact same thing in 1 Peter chapter 2 verses 4 to 8 calls Jesus Christ the chief cornerstone but I thought Peter I thought Peter was the rock no Peter said Jesus Christ is the rock also 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 4 another good verse on the matter let's see who the rock is that further demonstrates who it is 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4. And did all drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. Again, it's built on the foundation of Jesus Christ, not man. Uh, the basis of truth is Jesus Christ. Uh, John chapter 14, verse 6, and 1 John chapter 5, verse 20. Not the, not the so-called proclamations of the church leaders or infallibility of the church leaders. 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15, when read in context and cross reference with other verses of Scripture, is not in any way or shape or form teaching that the church itself is the standard or source of the truth, like Catholics are busy made to believe with their eisegesis. It's Christ who is the, the, the truth, we're the pillars and ground of it, meaning we're the ones who proclaim it and go out and preach it. That's what it's saying there when you compare Scripture with Scripture. But of course, just like any cult, the Roman Catholics don't do that because Roman Catholicism is a cult, plain and simple, and they don't want you checking their doctrine with the Word of God because that way they can't control their followers. It's that simple. Don't be deceived by Roman Catholicism. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.